Hi there, this is Prof. Johan from the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. Welcome to my series on the Introduction to Chemical Engineering and Chemical Engineering Principles. In today's video lecture, I want to talk to you guys about temperature. Now, there are two commonly used temperature scales. The one is the SI phase temperature scale, and the other is the Imperial or American Engineering based temperature scale. Now, both these two have units that we frequently encounter. In the SI system, this unit is degrees Celsius, and in the Imperial system, this is degrees Fahrenheit. Now, we know that there's a relationship between these two, but that they are not equal. These two temperature units are, however, not absolute. What do I mean with absolute? That means that there is not an absolute zero. Absolute zero temperature is defined as the point at which nothing happens or movement ceases. Now, these absolutes in both the SI unit and the imperial unit scale do exist and is given by Calvin in the SI system and degrees Rankin in the imperial system. So for both these two, we know that we have an absolute zero for the temperature. We also know that zero Kelvin must be equal to zero degrees Rankin if it's absolute, and both of them have the same absolute value. Now there's a correlation in the SI side between Kelvin and degrees Celsius, and it is such that zero Kelvin is equal to minus 273.15 degrees Celsius. Now we are simply going to use the value 273 degrees Celsius, rounding it for most of what we're going to do. On the imperial side, it is defined that 0 degrees Rankin is equal to minus 459.67 degrees Fahrenheit. And yet again, we're going to round this to a value of 460 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, the next thing about these two temperature scales that we need to know is that the degree Rankine and degree Fahrenheit side, the increment between the temperatures are the same. And on the degree Celsius and Kelvin side, the increments are the same again. But these two sets of increments between the SI system and the imperial system are not the same. Now, to understand this and to get to correlate these two to each other, we need to know a few more things. We know that for the SI temperature degree Celsius, water freezes at zero degree Celsius. We know that because of this offset being 273, that this will be 273 Kelvin. We also know that water boils at 100 degree Celsius, and this will now be 373 Kelvin. We have the same thing on the Rankin Fahrenheit side. Water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet again, we know that this offset is 460 degrees for the Fahrenheit Rankin scale. And we can now calculate that water is going to be freeze at 492 degrees Rankin. Adding the 180 between these two, we know that water will boil at 672 degrees Rankin. Now, this is one of the most important things we can use to understand the difference between the SI and the imperial temperature. Because the difference between water boiling on the Fahrenheit or Rankin scale is 180 degrees. And the difference between water boiling on the Celsius or Kelvin scale is 100. This implies that the delta between the two is related to each other by a factor of 1.8. Or put in another way, delta degrees Rankin over delta Kelvin is the same as the delta degrees Fahrenheit over the delta degrees Celsius and is equal to a value of 1.8. Now let's look at something else. We can use the information written here to convert between one to another. Let's start and say minus 40 degrees Celsius. What is this in degrees Fahrenheit? Let's go and say that 40 delta degrees Celsius must now be equal to 40 multiplied by 1.8. And this will give me 72 delta degrees Fahrenheit. 
So this means that if I'm at this point minus 40, I know that the offset here to this is calculated from the Rankin side, that offset now being 40, this offset can be 72. But offset from where? The offset from a certain point. This is minus 40, a 40 offset from 0 degrees Celsius. On the Fahrenheit side, this must be offset from 32 degrees. So if I now go and say 0 minus 40, that's the offset, must be equal to 32 minus 72. So I've offset 40, which is equal to offset of 72 on the Celsius scale to the degree Fahrenheit scale. I start with a reference 0, which is equal to 32 from the Celsius to the Fahrenheit scale. Then I end up with minus 40 degrees Celsius equals minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And by the way, this is the only point where these two scales now let me just take five seconds to rearrange this drawing so that it makes a bit more sense. And there you go. Now the scales look a little bit better. To prove to you that this minus 40 equals to minus 40 degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit was just a fluke. Let's look at zero degrees Fahrenheit and convert this to degrees Celsius. Now zero degrees Fahrenheit is 32 delta degrees Fahrenheit lower than zero. And this will be equal to 32 divided by 1.8 delta degrees Celsius. Same what we did here. The only difference is this is now the other way around, which means we divide by the 1.8 and not multiply by the 1.8, which is equal to 17.78 delta degrees Celsius, which I'm going to round to 18 delta degrees Celsius. And this is now the offset from where we started to get to the zero Fahrenheit. So we're going to say 32 Fahrenheit minus 32 the delta is going to be the same as the first 32 is zero because that's where we start minus 18. So zero degrees Fahrenheit is equal to minus 18 degrees Celsius. We can now fill in another point on our graph and that is the point where zero degrees Fahrenheit is equal to minus 18 degrees Celsius. And we can quickly add the degrees Rankine and Kelvin values for these. And there you have it. Now from these calculations I've done here on the right, you should be able to see that there's a set of formulas to convert from the one set of temperature units to the other. Now I normally don't remember these. I work them out as I go along by understanding this figure. But for those of you that want to remember things, you can remember these as given to you in your textbook. And here you can see you can convert from Rankine to Fahrenheit, from Kelvin to Celsius, from Fahrenheit to Celsius, and from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now you can see in these formulas that this and this is equal to 1. And as I said, the conversion from Rankine to Fahrenheit, you just add the 460. And from Celsius to Kelvin, we just add the 230. But for conversion from but for conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit, we need to take the difference in scale into account. And the same when we go from Fahrenheit to Celsius. You should also see that there's a there should be an equation to go from degree Rankine to Kelvin, which is not given here, and to go from Kelvin to degrees Rankine, which is not given here. Go work these out for yourself. It's a really good exercise. The last thing I want to talk about in this specific video on temperature and temperature conversion is the delta temperature conversion. Now, what am I referring to if I say delta temperature conversion? We could be given a unit where we have something over a degree Celsius. Now, if I say over degree Celsius, I also say per degree Celsius. We know what that per means. It means for every one degree Celsius. So if it is for every one degree Celsius, it is actually delta degree Celsius. Think about this. If we, for instance, have the SI unit for heat capacity, it is going to be kilojoule per kilogram Kelvin. And this Kelvin here is a per Kelvin. For every Kelvin and kilogram that we have, we're going to go up one kilojoule. If I want to convert this, I'm going to convert the kilojoule to BTUs, the kilogram 
to pounds and I'm going to convert the Kelvin to degree Rankine. But as I said, this is actually per Kelvin to delta Kelvin, which means it should be a delta degree Rankine. If I'm thus going to convert this Kelvin to that Rankine, I could even have written this as kilojoule per kilogram degree Celsius because a per Kelvin is the same as a per degree Celsius. And I could have written for the imperial units BTU over pound delta degree Fahrenheit because those two deltas are the same. And those two deltas are the same. Remember from the previous scale I drew? And you'll frequently see that when we have things like heat capacity, that we do not distinguish between kilojoule kilogram Kelvin and kilojoule kilogram degree Celsius because they're the same in this case. It is not like we said before that when we want to go from degree Celsius to Kelvin that we need to add 273. In this case, the delta degree Celsius is equal to the delta Kelvin. They are the same. Now, if we want to convert from the degree Celsius to the degree Fahrenheit, in this case, we are not going to go to this temperature conversion. We're not going to say that T in degree Celsius equals the T in degree Fahrenheit minus 32 multiply by 1 over 1 1.8 to go from delta degree Celsius to delta degree Fahrenheit. This offset is not needed. Why is this offset not needed? Because I am actually saying that I have a degree Celsius here that I'm converting. Those two subtracted from each other becomes the delta temperature in degree Celsius. And this will then fall away for both those two. And it's only that part that plays a role. So converting from this degree Celsius, which is now delta, to that degree Fahrenheit, which is now a delta, I must work with the 1.8. And I do this the same way we do the normal conversions. I'm going to say kilojoule. I'm going to say kilogram. I'm going to say delta degree Celsius. And I do my conversion. I have 1 delta degree Celsius for every 1.8 delta degrees Fahrenheit. And then you can see, cancel out, and I have the value with which I divide. And obviously, I'm not going to do it now, but I'm going to have some value for kilojoule and BTUs, and I'm going to have some value for kilograms and pounds. And there I have my conversion, the same way I normally do it. But remember, this is just the delta conversion. Whereas, if I said 27 degrees Celsius as a point temperature, taking it to degree Fahrenheit, I need to use that conversion. Guys, I hope that this actually helps you. Enjoy your day.